Welcome to Living Life Today. We're continuing our study in the book of Ezra. Sometimes in scripture we don't see the actual time span that's presented between chapters. And in this portion of scripture it's probably well over a decade that they've been delayed but not defeated. Just say that out loud. Sometimes I'm delayed but I'm not defeated. The scripture says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. It may be one day, one week, one year, ten years, but when we are serving God, his plans will not be delayed. They will not be defeated. Only according to his plan does he allow those time frames to happen of delay. And uh, I talked to a lady today at my Bible study. She prayed for her husband for 54 years to come to Christ and one month before he went to be with the Lord he received Jesus Christ at his bedside the tears flowed and his heart was open so yes there was a little delay but they weren't defeated let's look at this chapter today Ezra chapter 5 verses 1 through 17 Now Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the prophet, a descendant of Edo, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. Then Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel and Jeshua son of Josadak set to work to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. At that time, Tatanai, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Shethar Bozanai and their associates went to them and asked, Who authorized you to rebuild this temple and restore this structure? They also asked, What are the names of the men constructing this building? But the eye of their God was watching over the elders of the Jews, and they were not stopped until a report could go to Darius and his written reply be received. This is a copy of the letter that Tatanai, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Shethar Bozanai and their associates, the officials of Trans-Euphrates, sent to King Darius. The report they sent him read as follows. To King Darius cordial greetings. The king should know that we went to the district of Judah, to the temple of the great God. The people are building it with large stones and placing the timbers in the walls. The work is being carried on with diligence and is making rapid progress under their direction. We questioned the elders and asked them, who authorized you to rebuild this temple and restore the structure? We also asked them their names, so that we could write down the names of their leaders for your information. This is the answer they gave us. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago, one that a great king of Israel built and finished. But because our fathers angered the God of heaven, he handed them over to Nebuchadnezzar, the Chaldean, king of Babylon, who destroyed this temple and deported the people to Babylon. However, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, King Cyrus issued a decree to rebuild this house of God. He even removed from the temple of Babylon the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem and brought to the temple in Babylon. Then King Cyrus gave them to a man named Sheshbazar, whom he had appointed governor, and he told him, Take these articles and go and deposit them in the temple in Jerusalem, 
and rebuild the house of God on its site. So this Shesh Bazar came and laid the foundations of the house of God in Jerusalem. From that day to the present, it has been under construction, but is not yet finished. Now, if it pleases the king, let a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to see if King Cyrus did, in fact, issue a decree to rebuild this house of God in Jerusalem. Then, let the king send us his decision in this matter. Have you ever been very discouraged? You're in the middle of something. You can't seem to get out of a rut. You can't seem to move forward. And somebody comes along with you and encourages you. Proverbs says, A word fits, fitly spoken is like apples of gold that are framed in silver. It says today, encourage one another while it is today. And that's what happens in this portion of scriptures. We see that the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Udah, they prophesy to the Jews in the name of the Lord. And they prophesy, it's an encouraging thing, that now we're going to see the house rebuilt. We're going to see the house of God actually built up. I'm thankful that we have prophets, that we have those that encourage us to come alongside. It says that they actually rose up and they began building. Now, this took a little bit of courage because remember, they had been told they had to stop building. Remember at the beginning of chapter 4, the people that, the, that, that were against the Israelites had gone to the, the city officials and had dis, really discouraged the, the Israelites by saying you have to stop building. So now we see that these two men who are a, a governor and they are also a priest have risen up and they just start to rebuild. It says that these people had an encouraging word. I like in, in 1 Corinthians 14, it talks about those who prophesy speak edification and exhortation and comfort to men. I wonder how many, um, because we just learned that many of them just went along their way and they were building their own houses. They would kind of forgot about this plan to rebuild house, the house of the Lord. But I know there were those that were still contending for this, this building for the Lord, this temple of the Lord to be done. And here we have two people come along. It just took two. Sometimes we don't really understand. We underestimate the potential of, com of our encouragement to others. If we'll just rise up and begin speaking encouraging words and begin being a builder and begin taking up the hammers and the nails and encouraging one another to fulfill the work of the kingdom. Actually, the word encouragement means to receive courage. And that's what was happening in this portion of scripture. The Lord was giving a, a sense of urgency to these men to begin building and it gave courage to those that were around them. I like the portion of scripture in Psalms 103 verses 13 through 14. It says that as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear them, for he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. When you're in a discouraging time and you haven't been able to move forward, you can count on God to encourage you and to show you compassion. John 10 says, I have given them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father has given them to me, is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. Oh, that's an exciting, I love this one. Ephesians, 3, uh, Ephesians 1, 4 through 5. Even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for the adoption of sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. When God has purposes, we might be delayed, but we will not be defeated. This wonderful Bible study, this living life, this is such a wonderful tool for us because it takes the word of God and it helps us to extrapolate God's promises and to hear 
from the Lord ourselves. That's why we go verse by verse and we stop and we listen. What is God saying to you? What is God saying to you today, believer? Are you taking courage in God's word? He says, fear not. He says, having done all, stand. He says, my plans for you are good and not of evil. Be encouraged that God is for you. I love this. It says in verse 5, but the eye of the Lord of God was upon the elders of the Jews that they could not make them cease until the report could go to Darius because now they have a new king. When God wants a new king on the throne, he'll put his king there. When he's working on the people's behalf, he'll make things happen. So now we see Darius is king. He's in the second year of his reign and he is going to begin opening the doors for the children of Israel to see the completion of God's plan. I'm so glad that God is on our side. Aren't you, church? Oh, thank him with me. Thank God that he is on our side. I'm so thankful for the times when I felt like I had hit a wall that people came alongside me and they encouraged me. Remember, courage means to give courage. So let's pray today that the Lord would open our eyes to those around us who need to be encouraged so that they can begin to rebuild those things which God has purposed for them. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the body of Christ. Lord, we pray that our eyes would be open to those around us who need to be encouraged. And that, Lord, we will come alongside. Maybe it's our spouse or a child, a school teacher, our pastor, maybe a Sunday school teacher. Maybe it's a young person who's kind of been a little bit confused by all the messages of the world. Whatever it is, Lord, give us the right words and give us the confidence that if we'll just open our mouth, you'll fill it with good things and that we will speak words that are like apples of gold that are framed in silver. All for your glory, Jesus, we ask. Amen.